I suppose it would be 30 years ago that I first came across Miller Nicholson. I started collecting when I was about 19, um, 20. I'd just left my job in the Treasury and I'd gone into the private sector, a substantial pay increase. The difference between the two salaries I would put into something to remember the the change and I bought an EC Quail painting and I started collecting um, them sort of built my way up as, as I could afford and I came across um, I've got it in my in my lounge I think it's a small seven by three and a half inch four inch watercolor by Miller Nicholson I had it cleaned and uh, down across four ways that there, there was a, like a dub that the, the artist used to go down there and paint and when you see it, you, you, you see he was using individual horsehair for some of his work and, and the, the atmosphere and the quality. And I realised then he was, he was the master. And, and sadly, most other artists that I see pale into insignificance co co compared with him. I didn't necessarily have the funds to collect his work. And in those days, there was a couple of really wealthy people that were throwing money at it and as I say, I could but admire his work uh, and then slowly over the years I've, I've built up a modest collection of his style. I mean, I, I think as, as we go through life, our taste buds maybe change. Uh, what I liked first about Miller Nicholson was, uh, I suppose, his pre-Raphaelite style of detail. I'm a very detailed facts figures sort of person. There's, there's one of the fishing fleet in, in, in Peel Harbour. When you look at the masts, the, the straight line, he never used a ruler, you know, he, he, he was phenomenal. Mm. And then I suppose as my taste buds, you could argue, matured or, or, or changed slightly, then liked the... well he, he became more impressionistic in his style. I suppose if I was to nail my colours to the mast about why John Miller Nicholson is so special it's the way he put atmosphere into his paintings in 1882 he was lucky to have a good friend in john ruskin who was um arts and crafts mr big i suppose really a bit of an artist himself and he persuaded him to go to italy to tour all the top artists you know, to look at you know various styles of work I think. behind me are two 1875 paintings John Ruskin used to buy his some of his best works in the 70s and take them off to London galleries and I think they were sold for five guineas or something that that was his real quality work from his um, pre-raphaelite days the, the, the details phenomenally good and I'm delighted that um, two of them I've got, they came back from London and I bought them at auction. After 1882-ish, he, he moved into the more Impressionist style. And I wasn't around in 1882, but I'm, I'm told that it was because of that trip to Italy that he saw different styles and decided he was going to alter his style to um, the more Impressionist. And, and he did. I've got um, two paintings of his work in the Impressionist style. And wow, they, they really are fantastic and I'm glad and, and honoured to, to, to have them in my collection. Mm -hmm. To me there is no no artist living or pre to paint on the Isle of Man can hold a candle mm -hmm. to John Miller Nicholson so you know that's one of my biggest regrets is that John Miller Nicholson has not had the recognition that he deserves. He was a painfully shy man. I think when he painted um, canvases for some of the shows at the Gaiety and they wanted him to come on stage and applaud him for his back you know, for the scenery work that he'd painted he was so shy he went out the side door Lady Locke who'd spotted his work and introduced him to John Ruskin they got him exhibited at the Royal Academy um, but he was painfully shy he just didn't like crowds and I'm absolutely convinced that if he'd been more forthcoming in meeting um, people and, uh, and speaking to them and explaining his work and going away and not that to effectively help sell it when it was in a gallery, then John Miller Nicholson would have been one of Britain and, and Britain and the UK, the world's foremost painters, because the quality is, is absolutely phenomenal.